Hi, it's uh, Dr. Phil Thomas again. This is the first of my series of videos about how I think people like you and me are perfectly able to try to treat our own alcoholism and beat it, hopefully obtaining what I term a functional cure. What do I mean by that? Do I mean that we're cured in the same way that some people are cured of cancer? No, I don't. What I mean by that is a cure in the same way that people, such as myself, can be functionally cured of asthma or high blood pressure or many other chronic, progressive, proper medical, physical diseases. Both the National Council for Alcoholism and Drug Dependency and the American Society of Addiction Medicine define alcoholism as a primary chronic disease characterized by impaired control over drinking, a preoccupation with the drug alcohol and the continuing use of alcohol despite adverse consequences and distortion of thinking. And I totally agree with that. With one proviso, I believe that for many of us, alcoholism is in fact a secondary disease, not a primary disease. I think for many of us, alcohol is a means of treating, although we don't realise we're treating anything, but we are, treating our primary disease, which for many of us is anxiety. For some people, it's a compulsive, obsessive personality trait. And there are many other psychological conditions for which we turn to alcohol as a means of obtaining some ad hoc amateur control. And we use alcohol as a means of getting through the day, of attempting to treat ourselves so that we can deal with the normal vagaries and adversities of life that most people just take in their stride. And for many of us, it works beautifully. It did for me for an awful long time. I guess this is what some people call a functional alcoholic, although I disagree. I think for many of us, for a long time, alcohol just sorts us out and it means we can get on doing all the other things that we're trying to do with our lives. Most of us, certainly in my experience, are perfectly otherwise normal individuals, often quite well educated, perfectly normal, sensible people, often very creative, generally oversensitive. And alcohol, at the very beginning, makes us feel better about being who we are and deal with our days. Unfortunately, alcohol then becomes a treatment that bites us back. We find ourselves struggling to deal with those normal daily vagaries without even more alcohol. We're becoming dependent upon it. We need more and more alcohol just to get through the days in a way that we could get through with a smaller amount of alcohol several years before. Eventually we get to a stage, as I did, where 
not taking alcohol means you feel much, much worse than you would ever have done if you'd never got involved with it in the first place. You have to take it every day just to feel basically sort of all right. And eventually you don't even feel all right. At this stage, as happened to me, you become addicted. I went from a stage where I would have a few drinks, maybe more in the evening, just to cope with what happened during the day and to prepare for the next day. Gradually over years, it took more and more and more alcohol to make that happen. To which in the end, over the last couple of years before Baclofen came along, I was having half a bottle of vodka for breakfast, often drunk in the space of about five or ten minutes as I collected my morning paper, then another half of vodka in the afternoon just to prepare for the family coming home and dealing with the evening and then I'd have one, maybe two bottles of wine in the evening just to get through the rest of the day. For me, alcoholism was not a primary disease. It was a secondary disease. It was a disease I inflicted on myself by the nature of the treatment that I had chosen for my primary disease. And this was proved to me when I was forced to see a consultant psychiatrist with a view to prescribing me baclofen. And I said to her, if you can relieve my anxiety, I won't drink. So as a test, she gave me lorazepam, one milligram a day of a benzodiazepine. And she said to me, I will not give you this long term, but it's a test. That one milligram of lorazepam completely calmed my anxiety and I didn't want to drink, although I did have the cravings of stopping drinking. But it reinforced the message that for many of us, alcoholism is a secondary disease. But nonetheless, it is a genuine, progressive, proper, medical, physical disease due to chemical abnormalities in our brains. This is vitally important, my friends, if we are to beat alcoholism for ourselves. I know it, and it has worked for me. I know it, and it has worked for many of the people that come to see me. Believe it. Believe it. Alcoholism is a chronic, progressive, proper, physical, medical di disease. And it requires a proper physical medical treatment. That is why lots of the long-standing, perfectly sensible, perfectly well-meaning behaviour programmes simply don't work long-term. We need to treat the disease properly. And over the course of the next few weeks, I hope to show you how it's perfectly possible for you to try to take on board all of these things and start to treat your own disease properly. Thanks very much, and we'll speak soon.